Hello from Hawaii. This is Auntie Rose with a story, Crow Boy, written by Taro Yashima. On the first day of our village school in Japan, there was a boy missing. He was found hidden away in the dark space underneath the schoolhouse. Nobody knew him. And he was named Chibi because he was very small. Chibi means tiny boy. This strange boy was afraid of the teacher and did not learn a thing. He was afraid of the children and could not make friends with them at all. He was left alone at the study time. He was left alone in the playtime. He was always at the end of the line, always at the foot of the class, a forlorn little tag-along. Soon Chibigi began to make his eyes crossed so that he would not be able to see what he didn't want to see. Okay, you see boys and girls teasing him. And Chibi found many ways, one after the other, to kill time and amuse himself. He looked at the ceiling. It was interesting enough for him to watch for hours. The wooden top of his list was also interesting to see. He would look at the patch of the cloth on the boy's shoulder. Of course, the window showed him many things all year round. Even when it was raining, the window had surprising things to show him. On the playground, if he closed his eyes and listened, Chibi could hear many different sounds near and far. And Chibi could hold and watch insects and grubs that most of us wouldn't touch and look at. So that not only the children in the class, but the older boys and girls even called him stupid and slowpoke. But slowpoke or not, day after day, Chibi came trudging to school. He always carried the same lunch, a rice ball wrapped in a radish leaf called a musubi. But when it rained and stormed, he still came trudging to school, wrapped in a raincoat made out of dried zebra grass. And so day by day, five years went by, and we're in sixth grade, the last class of school. We had a new teacher, Mr. Ifsobi. He was a friendly man with a kind smile. Mr. Ifsobi often took his class to the hilltop behind the school. He was pleased to learn that TB knew all the places where the wild grapes and wild potatoes grew. He was amazed to find out that TB knew all about the flowers and the gardens. He liked TB's handwriting. No one but TB could read. So he typed up TB's work on the blackboard. And often he called Chibi and he would talk to him when no one was around. But when Chibi appeared on the stage of a talent show that year, nobody could believe their eyes. Who is that? What can that stupid boy do up there? Then Mr. Isobi announced that Chibi was going to imitate voices of crows. Voices of crows? Voices of crows? Voices of crows. Then he imitated voices of newly hatched crows. And he made a mother crow's voice. And then he imitated a father crow's voice. First, he showed them how the crow cried early in the morning. He showed crows how they cried when village people had unhappy accidents. And then he showed how the crows called when the happy and great happy crows. Everybody's mind was taken to the mountainside from which Chibi probably came to school. At the end, to imitate a crow, Chibi climbed on an old tree. Everybody could now imagine exactly how far and lonely a place where Chibi lived with his family. 
Then Mr. Asobe explained how GP had learned these calls by leaving his home early at dawn to come to school. And then when he came home, it was sunset. He did this for six long years. Everyone cried, thinking how we had been wrong to tease him all these years. Some even had tears. Even the grown-ups rubbed their eyes. Yes, he is wonderful. And then came graduation day. And guess what? Chibi was the only one in the class who had perfect attendance for six years. After school was over, the big boys would often have to work to do. They had to work in the village for the families. Remember, these are poor people. Sometimes Chibi would come in the valley to sell charcoal that he and his family made. But nobody called him Chibi. We all called him Crowboy, and they said, Hi, Crowboy. And he would nod and smile as though he liked his name. When his work was done, he would take his money and buy some things for his family. Then he would set off in for his home, the far side of the mountain, stretching his growing shoulders like a grown-up Crowboy Crow. -boy crow.